Hello friends! This video will be about the content of the notebooks that I write, the organization of that content, what kind of content that is, how I write the content, and how it all has to do with the engineering design notebook rubric. Here's an index with timestamps so you can jump to specific parts if you don't want to watch the whole video. I honestly don't blame you. I'm going to start off with a structure speedrun. I'm going to quickly go through the content organizations of these three notebooks and then highlight the common parts of each one and how the sections connect to the engineering design rubric. So let's start with the Change Up Notebook, which has four notebooks in it. Sample Page, Season Plan, Engineering Design Process Review. Those three spreads are in every single notebook. Those are the most important ones. Then we get right into identifying the problem. We have Game Challenge Overview, Game Map, Game and Object Analysis, Scoring Analysis, Rules Analysis, and Scoring Analysis 2. Scoring Analysis 2 is where we have our strategies, or at least three of them. Then we get right into our component criteria, which helps us develop and test our solutions later down the line. Then we have our drive chain research, acquire and release research, and scoring research. Those are the three components that we have in our robot, so we only have to do three sections of research for the three components that we have. Next, we move on to brainstorming. We have brainstorming for every single aspect of our robot. We have strategy, then we have our full solution, and then we have per each component. We have detailed sketches for each one of our components, and that section is something that we did not include in any of our other design notebooks, but this is very, very important, and I plan to include that this year. Then we go right into our prototyping of our components. We test each one of them here, and we can continue going with our prototypes. Then we choose the best solution, develop it, and get straight into testing and redesigning. Notice how the flow goes right with this rubric. Let's keep going with our tipping point notebook. This one has eight books in it. This notebook starts off the same way. Sample page, team bios, season plan, engineering design process review. Like I said, those are the most important ones. Then we have the same identifying the problem stage, except we go into a huge amount of detail and analysis. There's deep analysis for every game object, specific game rules analysis, scenario analyses, etc. There's so much here. Then we continue into our criteria specifications, one section for each component as usual, and a building priority list. Research. Now we get into doing one section for each component as usual, as well as some pneumatics research since they were new that year brainstorming again, a section for each component, and a list of possible gearings at the very front. Then we start prototyping, choosing the best solution, and building the final version. We go super deep for this, one section per design that we prototype. Then we analyze all of the test data, and CAD and build the chosen final design. Then we go back into prototyping for the next component, and this continues for a while. After that, we get into testing and redesigning, and continue to go through the engineering design process. The reason that this notebook is so thick is because we go into so much focus and detail on each design and idea that we think up. We let no ideas fall through the cracks, and we use a lot of pictures. Let's continue with the spin-up notebook. This one has six books. Again, the first bit is exactly the same. Sample page, team bios, meeting plan, design process overview, season plan. Those are the essentials. Then, right into identifying the problem. We do a lot of the same analysis that we usually do. Game objects, map, scoring, but here we're a lot clearer with our strategies. Specifying criteria is a little shorter this time around, just the essentials. Then we do research on each component as usual, with some professional frisbee research thrown in at the end. And right into brainstorming, one for each component as usual. Prototyping is way more curtailed here as well, since we did one central design which was slightly modified to create the subtypes of prototype. We also modified our strategy during Mall of America, so we did a quick run through of the engineering design process then. This is where we start getting a little less organized, so we spent longer just going through the prototyping and developing the solution stages, kind of cutting out the choose best solution stage. After that, we get right into testing and redesigning. In summary, our structure basically follows the engineering design process, and the quality just depends on the amount of detail you go into. Remember that there can always be more detail, and you shouldn't cut out detail just because you think it's too much. If it's related to the topic and someone could find it helpful, it's probably best to keep it in there. After all, the reader decides what they want to read. Now I'm going to go into a little bit of depth about content production. The content of the engineering notebook should follow the engineering design process. I go into depth on the engineering design process in another video, as well as content recommendations and ideas. The link to that video is in the description. What I'm going to skim through here are the report formats that I use to get the specific details from days when builders and coders make progress. Nowadays, they fill it out for me because we don't usually have matching schedules and they go into the robot house when I'm not there, but I use these formats to fill out information even when I took all the notes for the notebook. 
Using a report format like this is very important. People in the industry do it because it helps keep communication organized and clear. So if you want organized and clear communication, use a report format. In the report, you want to collect all of the details. Yes, I know that's very specific and helpful. What I mean are details such as the specific changes made, how they were made, the purpose of making that change, how the change will affect future strategy and changes, where the idea of this change originated from, etc. Make sure that you snap enough pictures too, because they make what you're talking about make sense. If you're trying to get pictures of code, you can either turn your text editor on white mode or edit your picture to a negative so you can see the text as darker. Each day, you want to create a list of goals and then include that first thing in your entry and at the very end, make a list of your accomplishments and what you have to do next time. This is also very important as it shows that you're keeping an eye on your timeline. I would also recommend doing monthly timeline reviews or month in review. This shows the judges that you're staying on your timeline and acknowledge what you did or did not complete in that month. It's important to note here that I use technical writing when creating content for the engineering notebook because it's angled toward clear communication and data recording rather than expressing feelings or being descriptive. Yes, it's good to be descriptive in a technical sense, which is what technical writing is about. Now we're going to go to competitions. Competitions are tough. In almost every notebook I've read, everybody does these completely differently. The main concepts are the same though. I'll explain to you how I organize and do them, but it's totally fine to do them in a different way as long as you're collecting the information that you need. First, I always include a competition overview for ease of access and so we can go back later and quickly see if that's a competition we need. Then I have the match analysis, which ideally your driver should do so they can learn from the matches and reflect on their performance, but if they can't do the analysis, you should at least communicate the findings to them. Skills analysis is basically the same thing, but for skills. Of course, mention if you got any awards, because that's pretty cool. We also include a list of noteworthy teams to track which are the big players in the season and learn from their design, strategy, or teammanship. Strategy analysis is also very important, and your drive team should collaborate on doing this analysis since they're the one making the decisions during the match. Full robot analysis should be done by your builders for the same reason that your strategist should analyze the strategy. Scouting analysis is interesting. I've seen a lot of other teams do this, namely 10C and SpinUp, and I think it's an awesome idea, so I'm putting it in here. Definitely have a new priorities list and timeline. This is a kind of kickoff for your improvements after each competition, so you know what you need to fix or improve for your next competition. If you're confused on how to get any of this information, I have a slide up on the screen right now that lists a few ways to do these analyses. Alright, I'm going to wrap up this video with a few of the most important content tips. This is where it's at, guys. Number one, you want your content to be clear, accurate, and in-depth. These three are what I call the golden qualities of good technical writing. Clarity, accuracy, and depth. These three are important because they cover every aspect of what the judges are looking for in the bottom three rows of the rubric. If your writing is clear, it will explain your process simply and in a way that is easy to understand. If your writing is accurate, there will be no logical inconsistencies and it will be all in chronological order. If your writing is in-depth, it will cover every base of what your audience needs to know in order to complete the objective of your writing. Remember, clarity, accuracy, depth. Number two, cut the fluff. The judges can tell. Honestly, it's so easy to tell when people are adding extra words to the content in order to make the content longer, or phrasing it in a way that is extra long for no reason. Also, please do not tell ChatGPT to make your paragraphs longer or elaborate on specific topics just to make them longer. It waters down your notebook. It just takes away from the quality. Length of a notebook does not equate to quality of a notebook. If you want to have more content, make more real content. <laughs> and finally, number three. Do not be afraid to ask questions, repeatedly even, to get the information you need. It would have been awesome to have someone tell me this when I started out. It is okay to go to strangers and be like, hey, do you have a minute? I have a few questions for you. Or to your teammates and be like, can you tell me about the change you did to the lift? I don't have all the details that I need and I was hoping you could fill me in. Communication is one of the soft skills that you learn when you do notebook and this is so, so, so important. Be polite, of course, but don't be scared to talk to people or to ask for information. It's going to be okay. Alright, thank you so much for watching, I hope this video could help you out. Please leave a comment for any questions you have so I can answer them or reply in another video. Goodbye friends!